Hey everybody, welcome back to Fugue Office Hours. Uh, this is episode three, bringing your AWS environment into compliance. Fugue puts engineers in command of cloud security with tools to prove compliance, protect data from cloud misconfiguration risk, and shift left. Uh, I'm Drew, and we've got Ricardo here. Uh, Ricardo, what do you got for us? How's it going? Good, good. So office hours number three. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to shift into a little bit of the operational aspects. So when we start thinking about using Fugue on a day-to-day -day basis, you get your first visualization. You see how crazy it is. You see how you know vulnerable you are, some of the, the uh, non-compliant elements. Today we're going to start looking at how do we fix those. So um, you know, we like to think we made that process really easy. So it's one of those things where we can turn over some of this responsibility to junior level devs, junior level operations folks. Um, we give the instructions, but we're just going to go, you know, walk through this a little bit. Um, as I had said on one of our uh, earlier office hours, I, I like to take this time and kind of make fun of myself and some of the things that I've done in my accounts. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So uh, first, we, we are actually going to look at one of the um, visualizations that we did earlier in um, earlier office hours. And uh, if you see those, those are recorded, so you can definitely go back um, and look at those. But we're going to highlight one specific region, which is- And, the and this, is, this is one of your uh, demo AWS accounts, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is in a, uh, uh, the CA1 AWS region. Um, so in one of the earlier office hours, I pointed it out that, uh, you know, when you do those visualizations, you basically are seeing everything that you've got deployed. And so as you kind of look through these areas, you know, you see, I've got nothing here. These are all default VPCs, not really concerned about them. Um, you know, they're, they're non-compliant because when you get a VPC from AWS, they give you a default security group that's automatically non-compliant because it, it does a, uh, it allows everything out, so it's too expansive in its provisions. Is that non-compliant for like pretty much all of the different compliance families? Uh, more, it's CIS related because it specifies the default security groups and the default VPCs. Um, you know, calls those out specifically. But um, you know, when when we started looking at orphaned infrastructure, and we talked a little bit about that on one of the uh, one of our earlier sessions, um, finding out you know where you've got stuff deployed that maybe you didn't think you should have stuff there, or maybe you intended to get rid of it at some point and just never got around to doing it. Um, so we're gonna focus on this region. And, and one of the aspects of Fugue, and, and what I really like is, is the flexibility. So, so what I did is I actually created another Fugue environment just with this region. So, um, and I call that the Canada Network. So we're gonna, for, for uh, the sake of this, we're going to play like I am the uh, network manager, network engineering person that has to bring this into compliance. So you can see we have a very limited subset of total resources scan, so just 27. Um, if we look at the visualization, we've, we've narrowed this out. So it is just that region. Um, and it's really cool that we're able to do that because within the same dashboard, you know, I can create many dashboards for, for, for actual operational exercise for work that I need to do, um, which is really cool. Few gives you the ability to do that. Um, so if, if for, for those of you that have, that have or are using Few currently, I would definitely encourage, I mean, this is becoming compliant, uncovering all of your, your vulnerabilities is, you know, it, it's baby steps. So sometimes you're looking at too much. This gives you the ability to narrow it down. So we're gonna look just at this region um, and I'm going to take a different view. I'm gonna look at these things. Um, and as you can see, you know, because I'm not looking at a lot, there's gonna be missing data, but I'm gonna carve out my non-compliance and I'm gonna do compliance by resource. And then I'm going to just filter out to the non-compliance and I'm just going to look at the network related stuff. Uh, 
Um, so if we look at all the network related stuff, I'm really, I'm actually just going to focus on this VPC for now. So we look at um, this VPC and we see the ID is 2D84. I can remember that. Um, but we can click into this specifically. And so we can see the controls that we failed. So default security group should restrict all traffic. Um, so we'll, we'll address that. And we look at VPC flow logging should be enabled. Um, so the nice thing about Vue, what we've also done is we've created checks for every, or I should say fixes for all of the areas of non-compliance that, that you're going to have. So if we go to our docs page, um, you will see lists of fixes for, for each area of non-compliance within the environment. So I'm going to use the magic of a search on this page. And let's see if we can find flow log. Yep, okay. So we have flow logging should be enabled. We know that that is one of our areas. So um, we've also, what we've done is created the, the remediation steps. So fixing these things, you can do it by the, uh, by the console or we have CLI. Um, I'm just gonna use the console today. Drew, maybe we'll have a, uh, another session at some point of office hours where we start using the CLI. Personally, I think it becomes a little bit boring because it's just me in the terminal uh, putting in commands, but hey, some people might wanna see that. Um, so what we'll actually go through here, we'll look at these things. So if we go to the VPC, we'll look at the, go to the flow logs tab, create it, um, select reject, send the CloudWatch logs. We have a log group that we created and the IAM role uh, to publish. So one of the things that, that AWS does that's, that's really nice is because there are so many services and it can be a little bit annoying, um, there are service roles associated with everything. Um, when you actually are creating your flow log, you can create a permission that is just restricted to publishing uh, flow logs. Um, there are other services that do a lot of logging. So really any service or role that you've created that does logging would work. Um, that, that is permitted to publish logs, you would be able to use. Um, but I had AWS, I just um, went ahead and had it uh, create the role for me. So we'll be able to select that role. But if you look at the VPC, so we saw in our diagram, there's only two VPCs in the region. We know this is the one that we're looking at, which is the uh, 2D8F. Um, and we go to flow logs. So this is all pretty straightforward. Um, and, and again, I'm just following the instructions and, and you absolutely would be able to start creating task lists, start creating many environments within your few console uh, to, to basically have somebody perform this task. And what's nice is I've carved this out in little chunks. So I can go region by region to start creating these fixes and um, it will be, you know, it'll appear on my, my global uh, view, my overall view of, of the account. So um, that's nice. We'll just set it at 10 minutes, send to CloudWatch logs. Uh, this is gonna be my destination group, the role. Let's see, um, what did I call it? Let's see if there's a log. There it is, flow logs roll. And pretty straightforward. We'll add a tag. Call it office hours. Add the tag and create. So we just created a flow log. We just fixed that. Um, the other thing that was mentioned was the default security groups. So let's look at the security groups and the defaults associated with this one here. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is just shut it down. Um, and just eliminate the rules for this default security group. So basically this default security group, there's no inbound, um, no outbound. And 
we will kick off a quick scan. So while that is scanning, that'll take a few minutes. Um, Drew, any questions? Yeah, so I think the one that, that uh, jumps out at me, um, obviously, and, and, and we, we get it uh, a fair bit is, uh, you know, why not an easy button? Why can't you just kind of click a button in Fugue to say, fix this violation that we've got in our, our cloud environment? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna try not to be snarky. So um, our CTO actually has really good answers for this. Um, mine are, are not um, as eloquent. Um, the, the, the simple reason is, you know, you, you don't want an automated system determining what's good and what's bad. So Fugue uses a concept of a baseline. So when, when you're using a baseline, you're working from a known good state. So basically you're saying, this is the state of my environment, notify me of changes, and if necessary, fix it back. So, so revert it back to that known good state as opposed to an assumed good state. So we don't know, like you don't know, or any system, it, it, it doesn't know unless you tell it um, how my application works. So for example, if I have a public S3 bucket that needs to be public because the application interacts with, with other users and you upload files and my automated system automatically um, makes that non-public, uh, makes it private and maybe encrypts it. And so people can't access it. You're breaking things. So, you know, when you allow a system to determine what's good and bad, you create and you introduce breaking changes to an environment. So that, that's, you know, kind of the straightforward uh, way. You know, other kind of snarkier comments are, you know, did you allow that automated software to build the system? You're you going to let it tear it down and break it? And so that, that sort of thing, but it, it really comes down to knowing where you're coming from. You know, is there a known good state to work from? And if you have that known good state, you know, that's where you want to, to operate from versus kind of having that make semi-intelligent decisions for you. Yeah, it's definitely something I'd love to, to, you know, get in with you on a future office hours is, uh, you know, how Fugue does automated remediation for, you know, you have security critical resources and, and they cannot change, at least not without going through some sort of approval process. And if they do change, you can have Fugue change it back to what was running without needing any additional automation scripts or separately defined uh, end states. And, and that, that's really cool. Um, it's definitely a topic for for a future office hours. Uh, but one thing I noticed even with, with what you did to bring, you know, that, that resource into compliance is there were options there for you to pick. So, yeah, yeah. You know, so right, so it's like, you know that a resource, you, you know, Fugue's gonna tell you that a resource is out of compliance and what you need to do to bring it into compliance. But in that process, you're gonna have different options for how you want to bring that into compliance and Fugue obviously can't make those decisions for you. Yeah, sure, sure thing. I mean, and you'll see here. So now we, we fixed this. So this, uh, this was the VPC that we were focused on. If we look at these checks now, so we, we've accomplished that. So mm -hmm. I, I checked that off of my, my to-do list. Um, so, you know, as I look through this region now, I look at the VPCs, this last one, um, you know, I need to address this. But as you mentioned, there are options. So, you know, if we think about um, you know, options, and I know we didn't necessarily plan for this for, for this specific office hours, but this VPC, I, I can I can waive this check. So, you know, this could be a case where I don't want to add a flow log. I, I don't, this is a, a VPC that's, you know, non-production, not so concerned about it. You know, that that's an option that I have. I can waive it. Um, you could also, if you didn't want to do CloudWatch, you could send your, your logs to, to S3 bucket. So it's um, a number of different options that, that few provide you um, and that AWS provides you for those fixes. But, you know, you can see now we're, 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 we're getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and then we look at the visualization again for this VPC and no longer is it red. This VPC is compliant. We've got a couple of security groups out here that, that need to get fixed. Um, but yeah, the, the VPC itself is, is fixed. We'll address these security groups. Um, and, you know, I've created a task list for myself 
um, just by, by using few. The other nice thing about this, you know, once I'm done, um, you know, this office hours environment, which is the main environment is going to improve. So that compliance level is going to increase. And, you know, when all is said and done, once I've done everything that I need to do here, I can just remove this environment. So, um, you know, it, it's just, it's really a flexible tool. So it, you can certainly um, create the tasks within the environment and creating kind of duplicate environments to work under. Um, yeah. Also have the ability, and we'll probably talk about it at a later office hours, is exporting that data and creating some task lists. So, you know, a lot of cool things we can do with Fugue. Uh, I love these office hours because it gives us the opportunity to, to dig into the, the tool a little bit more and talk about how our customers are using it um, day to day and going over different use cases. But that's all I have for you for, for yeah. this session. But um, any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. I, I think, um, you know, this is awesome. And we can see people moving along in that, that cloud journey. And no, it's, it's, it's nice. It, yeah, it's that, that Fugue kind of takes the guesswork out of, uh, of cloud compliance, sort of just gives you that roadmap, you know, which resources are out of compliance, which compliance families are they in violation of, yep. um, you know, what do you need to do to bring it into compliance? And we give you the step-by-step -step instructions to go ahead and do that. And then obviously then, you know, with the next scan, validate that you're, you're now good, at least for those particular ones that you remediated and you can move forward. Yep. That's awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that, I think that's great. This is a wrap on uh, office hours number three and uh, I will see you next time. And uh, maybe, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, probably look into kind of creating some, some compliance reports because we know all those auditors and management folks really need to see those all the time. So might as well get that, uh, get Absolutely. that taken care of and automate that problem away. So let's do it. Cool. Awesome, Ricardo. Well, I'll see y'all next time. And uh, thanks for stopping in. And right, uh, have a good one. Yep, you too. Cheers.